So in the next part uh, of the lecture, we are going to introduce the so-called gradient vector. So now a, a gradient vector is um, a method to organize all partial derivatives of a function of several variables into a vector. Uh, so it is denoted by this um, symbol, like a triangle, yeah, and this symbol is called nebula. It's, it's not a letter from any alpha, alphabet or anything, so it's just a special symbol to denote the gradient vector. So it's nebula f. Now, um, if our function has two variables, then uh, the first entry of nebula f is just the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and the second entry is the partial derivative of f with respect to y, right? So we can uh, write it like this, df dx i plus df dy j, where um, I believe that you should be familiar with this notation, i is the vector 1, 0, and j is the vector 0, 1. And sometimes maybe we can write a little arrow to emphasize that it's it's a vector. Well, uh, same thing for three variables, only if we have a function of three variables, then the gradient is going to have three, three entries. So uh, here are some examples. So how can we compute the gradient vector of this function at, at a given point? Well, uh, first, let me re rewrite the function. So the, the function is, is this. Um, so let me rewrite it uh, to make differentiation easier. So uh, x times x minus 3 is going to be x squared minus 3x and then minus 1. So the first step is to compute partial derivatives. So fx is, I am, I am differentiating the, this expression with respect to x. The derivative of 2 of x squared is 2x. The derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. And that's, that's it. Uh, so partial derivative with respect to y. Uh, so here, just negative y depends on y. So uh, partial derivative is negative 1. Well, okay, so now it means that the gradient uh, vector of f is the vector whose two entries are, well, this, this, this 2x minus 3 and negative 1. Well, and the gradient vector of f evaluated at the point 1, negative 1 is going to be basically the same thing, only now we need to substitute x equals 1 and y equals negative 1 into this expression, right? So we get 2 times x, 2 times 1 minus 3. And here we still get negative 1. It's just a constant. So we get 2 times 1 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1. And uh, using the ij notation, we can rewrite it as minus i minus j. So I'm going to write the, these little arrows to emphasize that i and j are vectors. Well, as opposed to scalars. On, if it is printed, then it's going to be um, denoted by bold uh, font, bold i and bold j. Okay. So another example with three variables. Again, um, to find the gradient vector, we need to, to find uh, all the partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is um, so just the first term depends on x, so it's going to be uh, 2x over 4. So 2x over 4, which is x over 2. So partial derivative uh, with respect to y is 2y. And the partial derivative of f with respect to z is going to be uh, 2z over 9, right? So 2 over 9 times z. Okay. So it means that... Um, our gradient vector nebula f is just these three things put together. So the vector whose first entry is x over 2, second entry is 2y, and the third entry is 2 over 9 z. So we can also rewrite it as x over 2i plus 2y um, j plus 2 over 9 z. Okay, uh, now in order to compute the gradient at a specific point, we just mi minus 2, 1, minus 3. So we just uh, substitute minus 2 for x, 1 for y, and minus 3 for z. 
for doing this, we are going to get, well, I'm going to replace x with negative 2, so minus 2 over 2 pi plus 2 times 1 j plus 2 over 9 times z is negative 3, negative 3 k. So now I'll just do the computation. So minus i plus 2j uh, minus 2 thirds k. And that's the answer. Okay. Um, I hope it may make sense. Now, um, if we have a function of n variables, then the gradient vector is a vector with n entries. So if we have a function of n variables, then we don't really use the i, j, k notation. So uh, we just, um, in order to specify a vector, we just uh, write down all its entries in parentheses. So and that's the answer. So that's basically it about the gradient vector. Uh, maybe for your information, in the next lecture, we're going to see uh, what the geometric meaning of the gradient vector is. So it is actually kind of helpful. I mean, it's not just a way to organize it neatly so that there is a geometric meaning. So now please pause the lecture and do the quiz.